Hello and welcome back to Distributions, the video series where we talk a lot about stuff we can do with generalized functions. And in today's part 17, we will talk about how we can extend the convolution to even more generalized functions. And it turns out that this is not so complicated when we take distributions with compact support. But as you already know, before we start, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And as a reward for your support, you can download additional material for all the videos with the link in the description. Okay, then let's start by recalling how we have defined the convolution in part 13. There, the convolution denoted by star was just a bilinear map where the first entry got a test function and the second one a distribution. This means the new distribution that comes out here is denoted by psi star t. There psi is a fixed test function and t a fixed distribution. And now we can define this new distribution by saying how it acts on test functions phi. And this was not so complicated, because formally we could just push the convolution to the right hand side. This means we have t applied to a convolution of two test functions on the right hand side. However, as you might remember, we have to change a little bit, we have to give a rotated head to psi. And indeed, this is not a complicated operator, it's just a reflection. So this new function is just psi of minus x. So it's almost the same function, because we just reflect it over the y-axis. Okay, so this is the whole definition of the convolution of distributions, where the first part has to be a test function. It can also be a distribution, but then it has to be a regular distribution represented by a test function. Therefore now the question is, can we extend this definition such that we can put in two distributions without regularity? And this is exactly what we will do today. We will extend this definition such that the convolution is defined for two distributions. This means now the first entry can be any distribution, but we will weaken the second entry a little bit. There we will only allow distributions with compact support, which are denoted by E prime. However, the outcome of this convolution is still a general distribution in D prime. So you see, having one distribution with compact support in the definition makes the whole convolution possible. But I can already tell you, even that can be extended, but this is something for a different video for sure. Okay, so here you should already see that the advantage of having a distribution with compact support is that we can substitute our test function which also has compact support. However, this implies that we have to define this check operation we have for test functions also for distributions. So this will be our first definition here. What is this reflection for distributions? So there our distribution with compact support is denoted by S. And for this one we can define a new distribution which we denote by S check. And as always, we can define this distribution by pushing the action to the test function phi. So this is quite simple, we just use this reflection operator on the test function. And for this one we already know what it means, because for test functions we have a pointwise definition. And indeed it's not hard to check, as always, that this reflection operation coincides with the reflection we have for the regular distributions. More concretely, this means it's easy to prove if we have a regular distribution tf and then we use this check operation on the function f, which could be a test function or even a continuous function. And then by using the calculations with integrals, we get out that this is actually tf applied to phi check. So indeed the check operation moves to the test function for regular distributions. In other words, it's justified to use this definition for S check. Moreover, we also see that the check operation for test functions is just a reflection, so it will not change the size of the support of the test function. Only the location can change, but this means that our S check also has a compact support. 
Also there, the location of the support might be different, but it's definitely also a bounded set in Rn. So this is really important to remember. We stay inside the distributions with compact support. Okay, now what we could do is to use such a distribution with compact support in our original definition of the convolution. This means here we take a test function psi and also a distribution of compact support s. And you might already guess that in this case we can say something nice about the convolution that comes out. Indeed, what we have here are two things with compact support. Therefore, the new distribution the convolution gives us should also have compact support. In fact, we get even more because we get a regular distribution. So psi star s check is always a regular distribution. And obviously, if we take the check or not, does not change anything here, but this is what we will need in the end. So you see, this is already a nice result. We can represent this distribution by an ordinary function. Moreover, it turns out that this function has high regularity because the test function psi is C infinity. Hence, this convolution here always gives us a regular distribution which is represented by a C infinity function. This means we can interpret the result we get with the convolution as a smooth function on Rn. I don't show you the calculation here, but one can show that this follows from the fact that we have a test function on the left. Hence, this is true for any distribution on the right-hand side. However, in this case, we even have a distribution with compact support, and this means that the resulting function here also has compact support. Therefore, our final result is that this convolution gives us a test function again. So this is important to remember, this special convolution gives us a function with compact support. Indeed, this is not so hard to calculate because we can use the definition of the support for distributions. However, here I will skip the calculations because I want to focus on this important result. It tells us that we can define the convolution for two distributions when we just push the star to the right hand side. What this exactly means, we can formulate with the next definition. Here, as promised, we have the convolution with two inputs, where the first input is a distribution and the second a distribution of compact support. And the new distribution that comes out, we want to define as t star s. And as always, we do that with a dual pairing, where we have a test function phi on the right hand side. And now you already know, as always, the idea is that we push the star to something we already know. And in this case here, we want to have the convolution of a test function with a distribution. So what we want is phi star s check. And there we have it. This is exactly what we want. This is the new definition of the convolution. And why this is the correct definition, you see when we compare to the old definition. In fact, we can simply show that this one is compatible to the old definition. This means now our t has to be a regular distribution represented by a test function psi. Hence, if we put this t into our new definition, we should get out the same result as with the old definition. So let's first calculate what we get now. We have the dual pairing of t psi with the rest. However, since we have a regular distribution, this dual pairing can be seen as an integral. And there we have psi of x times the function that represents our other regular distribution. Therefore, let's simply say that this distribution is represented by a function g. This means in the integral we also have g of x. So obviously, here we can also exchange the order and the product, and then we can see that we can also write it as a dual pairing again. But then in contrast to before, we have the convolution on the left. And then on the right, we just have the test function psi. And exactly there, we can use our old definition of the convolution, so we push the star to the right hand side. So we have s check, phi check, star psi. So you see, this is exactly how the old definition worked, and we almost reached our goal. 
The only thing we have to do now is to push the check from the left hand side to the right hand side. So we just use the definition of this reflection operator for distributions. And now you just have to calculate for ordinary functions how this reflection operator acts in the convolution. And there it's not hard to see that the check cancels with phi and goes to psi. And moreover, since the convolution is commutative for test functions, we can also exchange the order here. So then we have psi check star phi. So there you see, this is exactly our old definition. So in this case, it does not matter which of the two definitions we choose. Of course, this is really important because we wanted to extend the definition. So the definition makes sense. And in order to close this video, I show you maybe the most important property of it. Namely, you can apply any distribution T to the delta distribution with this new convolution. And now by using the definition, it's totally clear that we get out the distribution T again. Hence, if we see the convolution as a multiplication, then the delta distribution acts as a right identity. And in addition, it also acts as a left identity if we choose distributions of compact support. Indeed, you already know, it's very helpful to have such an identity element when we deal with applications. It means that we can use it when we want to solve partial differential equations. However, I would say applications we can discuss in future videos. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.